The largest land predator on Earth today is either the Kodiak bear or the polar bear, both of which can weigh up to 1,000 kilograms and live in the northernmost regions of North America. Though these animals are absolutely massive by today's standards, they are absolutely tiny compared to the dragons of the past, which are colloquially known as megatheropods. There are a lot of competing explanations as to what a megatheropod actually is, with size thresholds ranging from 4,000 kilograms all the way up to 6,000 kilograms. However, if we go for the 4,000 kilogram threshold, then this video will be at least an hour long. And for the 6,000 kilogram threshold, this video would be very short. So I'm going to take a mean, 5,000 kilograms. I spent nearly a full day combining mass estimates from so many different papers and sources, along with looking at countless specimens and their ages, and coming up with several conclusions and a mean mass for each species. And notice how I said species and not genus. A disclaimer is necessary as most of the information published here, especially regarding Spinosaurus, will likely be outdated in a few years. I mean, heck, it could be outdated tomorrow for all we know. Starting off with a possible tie, we have two possible megatheropods. Therizinosaurus chaliofrons and Tarbosaurus batar both of which have average mass estimates possibly exceeding 5,000 kilograms. But we can't be too sure as most of the material for both species is pretty fragmentary at best. What is interesting is that both these animals did live at the same time in the same area. And they both also likely lived to the end of the Cretaceous as Tarbosaurus teeth have been found dating to 66.7 million years ago, with a narrow range of about a million years. The reason these are only possible megatheropods is because they're likely not large enough to make the threshold. With most sources, I find putting them around four and a half tons, not five tons. And we're also not going to be looking at exceptional individuals. We're only going to be looking at average specimens. So it's likely that neither of these are actually megatheropods. Then there's the other category of possible megatheropods, and that is regarding species that might or might not be valid, including Oxalia and Sigil Marsosaurus, both of which might have just been Spinosaurus aegyptiacus specimens, as both of them are known from either very poor material or material that no longer exists, similar to the old Spinosaurus. But I digress. Looking at the first likely megatheropod, we have Dinochirus, which is actually more closely related to Ornithomimus and Gallimimus than it is to any other theropod on this list. This animal has recently been growing in popularity with appearances in Amazing Dino World, Prehistoric Planet, and Jurassic World Evolution. Also, I'm not being sponsored, and if this video gets taken down for copyright issues then it sucks to be me. We only have three specimens with reliable size estimates, and I've taken the average of all three of them, with the smallest being just over 2,800 kilograms and the largest possibly reaching up to seven tons, though there are fragmentary remains that possibly grow much larger than this. I also heard somewhere that there is a specimen of Dinochirus with a pygo style, meaning that it might have had a tail fan of feathers, but that's only possible and not confirmed. Next we have Spinosaurus aegyptiacus, and the reason it's so low on the list is because of several possible species that might actually just be members of Spinosaurus, and because this is a democratic dive into megatheropods, we have to include everyone. These species and genre include the previously mentioned Sigil Marsosaurus and Oxalia, which both have mass estimates around 4,000 kilograms and are likely synonyms of Spinosaurus. There's also two larger Spinosaurus specimens, including NHMUK R16421 and ms and MV4047. Both of them have length estimates over 13 metres. And I've estimated both their weights to be over 6,600 kilograms and 8,400 kilograms respectively. Next we have Mapusaurus rosei, another species with a pretty large sample size this time. 
I've picked five specimens to include in this deep dive into megatheropods, and the average mass is over 5,800 kilograms. Mapusaurus was likely a contemporary of Argentinosaurus, which lived at the same time in the same habitat, in the Huanco Formation. Mapusaurus is also a Carcharodontosaurid, which is something that will be pretty common throughout this list. And speaking of Carcharodontosaurids from the Americas, say hello to Tyranotitan tubatensis, which had specimens outgrowing over 6,000 kilograms, though the average is only around 5,850 kilograms. This is another animal that lived in South America, and it likely fed on several sauropod species and smaller dinosaurs, which lived 118 million years ago. The first species on this list to match 6,000 kilograms is Carcharodontosaurus saharicus, which lived almost 100 million years ago in North Africa. Carcharodontosaurus was likely a contemporary of Spinosaurus, living in the same habitat, though the two likely filled different ecological niches, meaning conflict was likely rare at best. Rather surprisingly, next we have Acrocanthosaurus atacensis which, judging from my data, is the largest Carcharodontosaurid, or second largest, weighing in at nearly 6.2 tonnes. Acrocanthosaurus literally means high-spined lizard, so it might have been the tallest megatheropod after Therizidosaurus, if it was a megatheropod, Spinosaurus, and Dinochirus. This theropod also would have been a contemporary of Sauroposidon, likely being the apex predator in its region. Now we move on to Saurophaganax maximus, and this is where things start to get interesting. Now occasionally you might hear how Saurophaganax is a synonym of Allosaurus, instead being Allosaurus maximus. However, there are a few differences, such as the vertebra, along with, kind of dubiously, the size of the specimens of Saurophaganax. Saurophaganax is actually the oldest megatheropod as well, living in the Jurassic period. Specifically, the Morrison Formation around 150 million years ago. Meaning that it likely hunted large sauropods. Or at least the young, sick and injured. Now, for this analysis, I picked four random specimens of Saurophaganax and got an average mass of around 6,500 kilograms. Which is way higher than older estimates which put this monster around 4,000 kilograms. There is very little doubt that this was indeed the largest predator of the Jurassic period, and the king of its environment. Now, the newest member to join the roster of megatheropods is likely Tyrannosaurus macrensis, which was once thought to be a synonym of Tyrannosaurus rex. Tyrannosaurus macrensis is only the second recognised species of Tyrannosaurus, to be scientifically described, the first being Tyrannosaurus rex in 1905, nearly 120 years ago. Next we have Giganotosaurus carolini, which was the largest land predator to ever exist in the southern hemisphere, with some rather recent size estimates putting it up to 10.4 metric tonnes, only just shorter than Tyrannosaurus rex. Contrary to popular belief, Giganotosaurus carolini was not actually a contemporary of Argentinosaurus, but instead Giganotosaurus lived 100 million years ago, compared to Argentinosaurus which only appeared 93 million years ago. To be fair though, Giganotosaurus still coexisted with several other sauropods, most of whom were way smaller than it. It was also discovered the year Jurassic Park was released or at least the film Jurassic Park was released, meaning both it and Tyrannosaurus rex were discovered in the same century, albeit over 80 years apart. I think we all guessed who number one was going to be from the very beginning, but it's Tyrannosaurus rex 100%, and there is plenty to unpack here. Tyrannosaurus rex is so well studied that most specimens assigned to the genus and species have been given nicknames. And here they are with all their mass estimates given right next to them. Now it's entirely possible that with more data, species such as Giganotosaurus carolini, Dinocarus morificans, Spinosaurus aegyptiacus, or Mapasaurus rosei, or any other megatheropod could be larger than T. rex. 
But given the current sample size of the species, I'm going to say T. rex is the largest for now until more data comes out on other species. Now, I am slightly sorry that the video was a bit shorter this time, but I've been pretty busy recently. And I've had very little time to work on this project. Hopefully next week I can give you guys something better. I'll let you guys decide. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye.